Hey guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap! I'm Zelda Master, and in this episode, we're gonna be making our way to the Minish Elder because in the previous episode, we obtained the Earth Element from the Deepwood Shrine, and now that we have it, we must go talk to him because that's what he told us to do. So, let's see what's up now. So, you have found the Earth Element. You are blessed with much courage and strength for one so young. If your convictions hold strong, head to Mount Cornell. There, you will find a, name, a man named Melari. Among all the Minish, there is no one more able to repair your sword. If you ask him, he will surely reforge the broken Pokori blade. I shall send him word in advance. Travel safely. You are brave, but there are many evils now in the world. Okay, so that's what we have to do. We have to head over to Mount Cornell, where uh, we'll find a blacksmith minish that will be able to reforge the broken Pokori blade. So, leave through this door. Okay, whatever. Um, so yeah, great, Elder. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't really care what he has to say. Let's just go ahead and get started and get moving. So yeah, the first couple episodes were pretty slow, but now the action is going to begin. We have a lot to do. So there was a secret pathway here that we can easily make our way out of uh, the Minish Woods. Well, we're still in the Minish Woods, but we're going to make our way out real quickly. The first thing you want to do, and this is really important, is talk to this little Minish guy in this mushroom house. So, green clothes and a mystical hat? Sir, would you by chance be Link, the one who found the Earth Element? Wow, word sure does spread quickly. Uh, surely you are. I heard so many things about you. I have no idea how, because I literally went and talked to the Elder, like, just this second. But, um, this is Bellari, and he is going to give you a super duper important item. It's this, right here. We should pick it up. It will definitely come in handy, I'll tell you that. It's a bomb bag! And we can hold up to ten bombs right now, and with that, we'll be able to explode rocks and other type of things, so it's going to be super helpful. We can't make our way over here. But, uh, we have to quickly make our way down to this, uh, tree stump, and then, yay, we're back to being big. We were small for quite a bit, taking on a whole temple being really small, but now we're big again. We're able to continue on, so, holder of the sacred power, we grant you the power of wind. <gasps> what was that? Hmm, whoa, it blew up? Hey, kid, look at where the stone used to be. There's some strange symbol on the ground. Yes, of course. Why, that must be... Well, I haven't the foggiest, to be honest, hmm. Alright, cool. <laughs> so, this is gonna play something really important later on, so if you find any more of those stone things, you wanna click A, buy them to interact, and they will all explode. But anyways, what we wanna do now, while we're heading back to Castle Town, or the Castle Marketplace, we wanna try to collect as many rupees as we possibly can. It's gonna serve us pretty well, so you're gonna find me cutting grass quite a bit, in the beginning of this episode, and that's mainly just so I can collect as many rupees. Once we do have 80, I believe, uh, I won't collect as much, so we only need like 20 more. Anyways, here are the bombs. So let's go ahead and place them in front of these rocks and wait a little bit. They should explode, and voila! The path has been revealed. So awesome, now we can exit this place from here. And oh wow, I picked up a blue rupee. This is really good, because I want to get as many as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to avoid cutting grass constantly. This is like a normal Zelda nature. <laughs> like, any Zelda game, you, usually I pull, cut grass, but usually when I let's play, I try not to because I don't want to show it off because it might get repetitive, but as you can tell, we almost have 80, and uh, once I get 80, I'll be really happy, and you're gonna see why. But let's go ahead and use this mushroom to jump to the other side. Place a bomb right here, and here you'll find a small minish house. We also got the tree stump that we can easily jump on, but I'm not going to do that because we can't do anything there yet. Real soon we're going to figure out why I ignored this place, but for now we can't. So I'm going to just go ahead and wait here real quickly for this to open up, and <gasps> there's a chest that holds some more mysterious shells. I'm going to say mystery shells, but whatever. It's mysterious mystery, who cares? But yeah, those were some more mysterious shells that we're going to leave in our pocket, and uh, we'll come back to it some other time. But anyways, I believe these are P-Hats. They look rather weird in this game, a lot of, like the Zelda 1 uh, ones, like, you know, being really small and such. Unlike the ones in, uh, you know, Ocarina of Time in the 3D Zelda games, because they were able to actually, like, have the enemies scale to the actual size they wanted it to be. But in this game, they have to have enemies really small, because, yeah, top-down perspective. Now, let's go ahead and place a bomb right here. Hopefully it explodes all of these rocks. That'd be pretty nice. Uh, yes, it did. Sweet. 
And up here we should find, oh, this freaking bridge worker. Not a bridge worker, but you know, the construction worker. He's just working, doing his thing. He's on duty. We're gonna leave him alone, I guess. And uh, let's go ahead and make our way over here to the southern uh, part of the field. And I just continue going on. So here we're gonna find another one of those stones, a holder of the sacred power is we grant you the power of wind. Alright, so again, uh, Alfon I was I want I, I don't know why I want to call him Alfonso, but Ezlo, not Alfonso. Alfonso is from a freaking different game, and he's not really your companion. But um, Ezlo is gonna constantly pop up and talk about that because it's kind of mysterious and why we are unlocking those uh, weird statues. But it will all make sense later on as we progress through the game. So yeah, just a bunch of things we can't really do. Here we got some vines that we're unable to move, but with something we're gonna be picking up real shortly will be able to uh, reveal what's inside there. So, yeah, get excited for that. But, man, I need just, like, freaking three more rupees. For real, dude, drop some rupees, please. One blue rupee would be awesome. But, no, I just can't find what I'm looking for. Um, here, you can tell by the sparkles that there should be a, like, tree stump under this. But, uh, we can't access it yet because we don't have the item to actually shake that, you know, have it rumble and all, but it's whatever. We should keep making our way. We want to make our way back to the market over in Castle Town, but like I said, I'm looking for some freaking rupees. If I could find some three, come on, please. I can't find anything. I don't understand. My luck is just awesome when Let's Playing, isn't it? I was able to find a lot of rupees in the beginning of the episode, but now just nope. All right, let's see if these enemies will give it to us. Please, no. Are you serious, a heart? This has to be a joke. Like, nothing at all. All right, well, in here we should find a fairy fountain. I'll go ahead and open this up just so we can, like, have it open for future reference. But yeah, just a quick fairy fountain. Here we picked up a fairy. It will replenish our health, which is nice, but uh, we're gonna need bottles if we wanna carry it with us and kind of have it give us a second life. Anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and head up to Hyrule Town, whatever. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, a uh, small cutscene is going to happen to where, see these kids? Now, I want you to look carefully at these sprites. One of them is a little booger boy from uh, The Wind Waker. I love these little sprite references. That's why I like this game so much. I just feel like it's a mashup of all Zelda games, even though it's its own unique and original Zelda game. I like this, like, all of these small ma mashups for, like, characters. They don't really have much of a personality, but just seeing them again in sprite form is amazing. Anyways. Come one, come all. See how many kinstones pieces you can collect. You never know what kind of fusing kinstones will do, but it's sure to be good. Come up, come on up and get your free kinstone bag for holding your kinstone pieces. Don't miss out on this incredible once in a lifetime opportunity. All right, yada yada yada. So this guy here is gonna force us to uh, get the kinstone bag. We want it obviously for free. And with these kinstones, we'll be able to interact with NPCs and uh, fuse kinstones with each other. Basically, you wanna find the same part or the like the other half of the part they have. And this guy is gonna do it. So as you can tell, he has a heart here. So that means the secret to fusing a kinstone with him will lead to a piece of heart. So I want to do that. I definitely want to do that. So he's going to give us a free kinstone that he's actually going to have the other half for. it. We'll be able to trade with it and then we'll get ourselves a free freaking piece of heart right off the bat, which is absolutely awesome. But uh, obviously we have to first fuse it with him. So let's just go ahead and spam A through his dialogue. And yes, I caught all that. Whatever, I explained it myself. So stand in front of me and press L. All right, let's go ahead and press it. So to know if someone wants to fuse kinstone, since normally when you talk to people, you just click A and they give their dialogue. You have to stand by him and see if a bubble appears. And if it does, that means you can fuse a kinstone with them. So let's go ahead and do a fusion. And there we go. Now a secret on the map will be revealed. So. Remember that weird bush I showed earlier with the vines in front of it? Well, now it's gonna open up. So that's one secret, and it will lead to a piece of heart, like his small bubble showed. So yeah, that's how it works. Um, and there's a lot throughout the game. We're gonna be fusing a whole lot. It's actually fun, I like it. A lot of people dislike this feature within the game, but I personally really freaking like it for some reason. I don't know. I love collecting things. I just love that feeling, so it's, it's kind of nice. 
Um, but anyways, I believe after obtaining this bag, we should be able to actually find one uh, near here, just randomly. Because there should be one in the grass, I think. At least I remember it being one in the grass. Believe it or not, I'm so far playing this off of memory. I haven't yet, like, practiced. Normally I practice throughout my Let's Plays and stuff, but... Uh, this game in particular, I've been just playing off of memory, hoping that I'll be able to get everything without skipping anything. Um, but yeah, so I guess not. Maybe there is, but if, if we can't find it, it's whatever. I'll come back later and look for it. Let's go ahead and head over here, though, and pick up this piece of heart. Yeah, with this piece of heart, we can start working on a new heart container, so not bad. All right, now that that is done and doneer uh, and everything, <laughs> we don't want to head back home. We want to make our way back to Hyrule Town. I like the name for that. I prefer Castle Town though, because I mean it is in front of a castle. But whatever, they gave it that in later games. Uh, I'm gonna call it Castle Town a lot. Excuse me if I do. You know, it's whatever. It's pretty much the same thing. But this shop here, obviously, if you couldn't tell by the big rupee on top of it. Um, hold some pretty cool stuff. So we can pick up a shield, 10 bombs, we have 5, we're good. We can buy a bunch of more mysterious shells, but I'm good on that. What I want to buy is this. That's why I was working for 80 rupees, because for 80 rupees, we can carry more money. So, yeah, I actually really need this, because when we start carrying a bunch of money, we're going to need a bigger wallet instead of only holding up to 99 rupees. So if you'll notice, the smaller rupee icon from green, it turned to blue. So, yeah, I really like those type of upgrade icon things they show. Man, I actually really like this place. I just realized, freaking Hyrule Town is so fun in this game. Oh, look at that! The Postman! Yeah, from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess and whatever else. He's in this as well. He's running around doing his Postman thingies. All of these NPCs we'll be able to interact with later on and have a blast with them. I mean, I'm excited. I am loving this Let's Play. It's gonna be awesome. I hope you guys are too. Anyways, now what we want to do before I get ahead of myself is make my way back down here. <laughs> I actually really like rolling too. Rolling is pretty awesome, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna ignore this coffee shop even though I can totally go for a nice cup of java. Um, this house over here is a really important house that you're gonna be re revisiting quite a bit, so let's talk to him. I am Swiftblade. <clears throat> That's a weird name, honestly, but whatever. Finest swordsman in all of Hyrule. If you train with me, I guarantee you will increase your skill dramatically. So, would you like to train here? Please, yes. Senpai, please. <laughs> okay. No um, but this guy is gonna be our master. He's gonna teach us the most legendary moves of all time, and we're gonna start off with the spin attack. So, we're gonna build up power with B and then release. You know, if you played Zelda, you should know this move, because it's a pretty common move in almost every Zelda game. So, yes, I do understand. He should show us first, though, because he is the swift blade. So, uh, let's see how he does it. And then we need to learn it. We actually need to learn it to progress. It's kind of weird how this works, but you're gonna see in a like bit what I mean by why we need it so badly to even progress throughout the game. So let's just keep saving A here. Alright, switcheroo. He's gonna do it. You actually no, I think he's like controlling our mind to do it or something. So yeah, he did. And now we have to try it. So after he did it on us, let's go ahead and do it by ourselves without him telling us how to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge until it's fully charged, and then release. And with that, yes, we have learned it. And that sound effect you heard there was the exact same kind of sound effect from Majora's Mask when you learn from the swordsman teacher in uh, Clock Town. It's like the same one. I know there's always that Zelda dingle, but that one has that weird tone to it that sounds exactly like it. I believe the background music is also the same that plays in that area. It's crazy. I love it. Love all the small references to other Zelda games. It's just awesome. Zelda always has that, but this one I just feel like is packed with it and then with the uh, you know 64 bit graphics just really add on so I love it um yeah you're gonna find me reminisce a lot throughout this game but I can't help it man I just can't All right so this uh guard uh is blocking the area to Mount Cornell and that's the area we want to head to so let's go ahead and talk to him so ho ho if you learn the spin attack uh it's dangerous, but maybe you can handle it. Well, let's see how you do. Show me that spin attack. So they want to make sure you know it. Let's go ahead and charge and voila. Or right, yeah, that's the one. But there are monsters out there, kid. Uh, just uh, spinning really lets you continue on. I don't understand, but whatever. So anyways, we're going to be making our way to Mount Cornell. But um, 
We need to pick up something really, really important that uh, I actually don't have the rupees for, but we'll be able to get it. So down here, hold something really important that will actually let you progress uh, throughout Mount, Kern Mount Kernel, but we're going to have to make our way to that area really quickly first, just um, so I can do something. So I'm going to ignore this, quickly make our way here. So here we are, and you see these 20 rupees? Well, if you don't have rupees like I, um, you'll be able to pick this up. And for 20 rupees back at that like small ladder I showed you guys earlier, um, we'll be able to buy a really handy item that will allow us to continue on. So yeah, I'm glad that they give you the rupees for this because you really freaking need it. Would have sucked having to grind for another 20 rupees. So let's go ahead and place this right here. And if we wait a little bit, there we go, it has exploded. And we should find a deck with script. Let's go ahead and take our shield really quickly. Get ready to block. Now we can buy something from him, so talk to me. Okay, you got me. Let me make it up for you. Uh, you can have the deluxe of, of all bottles for 20 rupees. All right, sure. I'll give you 21. Well, you yeah, can't, so whatever. Give me that empty bottle, son. Yeah. All right, so thanks a lot. <laughs> no problem, dude. And with that, we have a bottle. And this bottle is going to be really helpful in Matt uh, Kernel because... I, I don't know why, but I keep wanting to say Colonel, like freaking Colonel Sanders. God dang it, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> but yeah, it's Colonel, I believe. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, see what this bottle will be able to uh, put water in it? And then just drop it like that, and now this small beanstalk will grow! We'll be able to climb up. But before I do that, you can blow up this wall, and this wall is going to have a Deku Scrub that will tell you uh, if you need help. A Deku Scrub towards the uh, west will help us out. I'm gonna ignore him for now because I need to kind of like save my bombs because yeah it's gonna be really important. Anyways you'll notice some uh, freaking falling rocks and things that we're gonna want to avoid. Up here is something you don't want to forget though but this is gonna be really important and uh, that is well a fairy fountain so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly put you in there there we go so we kind of fairy and uh, with that and the rupees I'm gonna be picking up from this uh, we will uh, continue on uh, and I think yeah I think we're pretty much good from here so let's go ahead and keep going um, let's see I don't think there's anything else I need to worry about but over here we should find the guy that will help us I believe actually no down here is where we can buy bombs for 30 rupees and we do need to do that because I'm almost out of bombs, but I don't have 30 rupees. So I'm going to have to wait a bit. Hopefully we'll be able to find him soon. But let me quickly head inside here. Oh, this will actually let us advance onwards. So I don't want to do that yet. I actually want to head over this way because we will find another secret uh, right here. You'll notice, you know, in between these two fences that something should be secret in here. And it is. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm like going to choke on my own freaking spit. But up here... Let's go ahead and blow up this. We'll get something really important that it's really easy to avoid. I realized I didn't really need to have this fairy on me, so my bad. Let's go ahead and shrink into a little minish. I'm going to show this cutscene real quick. Normally you can skip it, but I want to show you guys how this small minish thing looks. So look at that. We're bouncing on gems instead of mushrooms. Looks cool. From now on, I'm going to skip it though. So yeah, there you go. So. This is a perfectly normal looking stone. It was another portal to the Minish world, I suppose. I have remembered that if I stop to think about it. Okay. Cool, but we were able to figure it out because we're not stupid like you, Ezlo. <laughs> yeah. Means in this small uh, pathway, we'll be able to make our way. Oh, geez. Make our way up here and pick up some nice Colonel Hot Spring water. Yum. And with this water. We can now, um, we can, we can do something special later on. I'm not really going to spoil what it's for, but, uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, I really need rupees because I have no more, uh, bombs and I need to buy bombs and we can literally get a set of 10 for, um, for 30 rupees, so kind of in a pickle here, actually. Oh, never mind, we got bombs, yay! All right, screw all that. Screw, I don't need anything else. That, that was actually really lucky. So we have five more bombs, and I think that will do enough to continue on. I hope so, at least. I could actually try to use my uh, gust jar here and 
suck up this stuff. Maybe I'll find something? I don't know. I doubt it. But it's always worth trying, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and suck up some more. And a little more. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna end off the episode here before I get ahead of myself and just mess around. But, um, in the next episode, we're actually going to scale this thing for real and uh, get far within it. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye!